Street Fighter, Resident Evil, Mega Man, Monster Hunter, some of gaming's largest, most popular franchises of all time. While they're all quite different from each other in terms of content, these video game juggernauts still have one big thing in common. They are all the creations of Capcom, one of the most prolific and respected companies in the modern gaming market. While Capcom has achieved massive success over the years and built up a catalog of franchises that rivals even their largest competitors, the company originally came from much humbler beginnings. In 1979, IRM Corporation was founded in Osaka, Japan by Kenzo Tsujimoto, also the founder of IRM, a company probably known best for its popular R-Type series. IRM was created with the express purpose of developing and selling electronic game machines in Japan, though not necessarily the same ones as arcade video games like Space Invaders that had just recently begun to take the world by storm. In 1981, the company established a subsidiary named Japan Capsule Computer, and IRM ended up changing its operating name to Sanbi. Two years after that, in 1983, Tsujimoto formed Capcom, whose name was derived by shortening and combining the words from its previous subsidiary's title, Japan Capsule Computer. It's unclear exactly what games IRM and Sanbi manufactured and distributed in the previous four years, but Capcom's first official release was quite different from what they later become known for. It would be an electronic coin-operated arcade game called Little League that lacked any type of screen or monitor and instead functioned by using lights behind a static image. Following Little League's July 1983 release, Capcom would put out a similar coin-op game called Fever Chance just a few months later in October of 1983. As these electronic games were being created and manufactured, the company was looking to bring in some fresh talent that could help create and design new arcade experiences, particularly ones of the now wildly popular video game type. To do this, they would attempt to pull in game designers from one of their biggest competitors, Konami. Konami had found great success in the arcade space with huge hits like Scramble and Frogger that proved just how capable and talented many of their designers and programmers were. Two people in particular had caught Capcom's eye. Kokoro Fujiwara, who had made both Puyan and Rock and Rope, and Yoshiki Okamoto, the designer of Time Pilot and Gyrus. The company managed to convince both Konami employees to jump ship and bring their arcade video game expertise over to Capcom. At this point, there were roughly eight developers now at the growing game company. Fujiwara and Okamoto split into two teams of four and started work on their respective game projects, projects that would slowly begin to form the company's long and successful legacy. Development on these games took place within two large rooms on the first floor of a somewhat derelict building that had very warped flooring. One of the rooms was so massive, in fact, that it had previously been used as a practice space by multiple baseball teams if the weather outside was rainy. Fujiwara had been more suited to action games at Konami, with titles like Rock and Rope, which played much more like a platformer, while Okamoto specialized in STG, or shooting games like Gyrus and Time Pilot. To try and mix things up, the two designers decided that Okamoto would create an action game, and Fujiwara would tackle an STG project, an arcade shooter titled Baragasu, or Volgus as it was known in English. Originally, Volgus was planned to be Capcom's second video game, but Fujiwara's team ended up completing their project a bit faster than Okamoto's, with development on the game taking roughly three months. It would hit Japanese arcades in May of 1984, becoming Capcom's first real step into the video game industry. Volgus was a vertical shooter that unfortunately lacked the unique and innovative qualities found in many later Capcom titles, taking just a little too much inspiration from Namco's groundbreaking Xevious arcade game, which had been released nearly a year and a half prior by that point. Players would need to maneuver their ship and blast their way through hordes of enemies over the course of nine stages. The player's ship was equipped with a normal shot and a more powerful cannon shot, which had limited ammunition that could be replenished by picking up flashing POW icons. Much like Xevious, each stage flowed seamlessly into the next, with the same short music track, presumably composed by Capcom's sound designer Ayako Mori, looping over and over non-stop.
Even though Vulgus wasn't the most inventive experience, that didn't mean it wouldn't bring anything new to the table. The arcade title introduced a unique mechanic where certain items would appear on screen that affected enemies and their behavior. The S item raised the speed of all enemies, the D item boosted enemy firepower, and the E item increased the amount of enemies appearing on screen. These items would continue to power up and bolster all enemies until they were collected by the player, negating their effect. Ultimately, Volgus didn't reinvent the wheel and had a tough time standing out in a genre which was becoming very crowded at this point, but it still provided some smooth and enjoyable gameplay that would make Capcom's 1984 debut into the video game market a financial success. This success pushed the title to be brought over to the Western market, and Volgus would make its way to North America later that same year with SNK as its distributor. Volgus never received any sequels, though one was announced for the Famicom NES in 1988 under the title Neo Volgus in Japan and Titan Warriors in North America. Neo Volgus's development seems to have reached completion, but it was strangely canceled last minute by Capcom for unknown reasons. Thankfully, the game has been preserved, and a fully playable ROM of the North American version, Titan Warriors, can be easily found around the internet. Over the years, Volgus has gone on to be included in many Capcom classic game collections, and has even received some playful references in more recent titles. The arcade shooter also introduced Capcom's signature Yashichi that would be featured as a recurring item in countless of their later games for decades to come, though its initial appearance in Volgus was that of an enemy. After Capcom's debut title hit arcades, the company's second video game wasn't too far behind, 